After teasing us for weeks with trailers showing off the Pixel 8 series, Google is now ready to give us all the details about its latest flagships. Announced during the company's Made by Google event on Wednesday, the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro look largely the same as their predecessors with a couple of key differences. The regular Pixel 8 is slightly smaller which makes it easier to use with one hand. Meanwhile, the Pro model has a new matte finish, upgraded cameras and an integrating temperature sensor. Across the Pixel 8 series, we are also getting the company's Tensor G3 processor, assistant improvements, and notably 7 whole years of Android and security updates. So you might actually be able to hang on to your Pixel flagship for a lot longer than before. Now we will just have to wait and see if the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro do enough for you to want to keep them around for years to come. It's worth noting upfront that though it's smaller than before, the standard Pixel 8 starts at $699 US dollar, which is $100 more than its predecessor. That seems a little counterintuitive, but the slightly smaller display actually refreshes at up to 120Hz now, which is better than the 90Hz last year. Meanwhile, the Pixel 8 Pro cost $999 US dollar another $100 increase over the Pixel 7 Pro. You can find a slew of pre-orders offers from Google and most carriers to sweeten the deal. Of all the changes coming to Google's flagships, I am most integrated by the new temperature sensor on the Pixel 8 Pro. I know, I know, it might seem like a gimmick and I hardly ever use a thermometer in my daily life anyway, but in this tale, tired land of smartphones, it's novelty and that also tells me Google is at least trying something new. The temperature sensor sits below the flash on the Pixel 8 Pro's camera bar. To take a reading, you will have to launch the new temperature app and select the type of object you are trying to measure. You can choose from food and organic, cast iron, plastic and rubber, fabric and more. For now, Google is waiting on FDA approval to enable the Pixel 8 Pro to take body temperature readings. But nothing is really stopping you from selecting the generic default option and pointing the infrared sensor at your forehead. Just know that it's not the advertised application and that the reading might not be 100% accurate. With the existing app and algorithms, too, you can check the temperature of bath water before putting your child in it or make sure your cast iron pan is hot enough before sticking your stick in it. There are plenty of ways to use the sensor but most of us have survived this long without carrying a thermometer everywhere. I am not sure we will suddenly start relying on it and it's entirely possible this feature goes the way of the solar radar Google introduced on the Pixel 4. Still at least based on my few attempts at using the Pixel 8 Pro to scan things, the system appears to work. I stuck the sensor within an inch or two of iced water and warm coffee and within 5 cm or 2 inches is recommended for best results. It took barely a second for the measurements to appear on the app and the results all seemed accurate. The coffee which had been sitting out for a while generally registered at around 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit across my multiple readings while the iced water came in at 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll have to spend more time with a review until it in the real world to know just how much I will use this and whether it will affect battery performance. The temperature sensor might be useful in specific scenarios, but the bulk of the updates for the Pixel 8 series is in the assistant. With generative AI being all the rage this year, it's no surprise that Google is integrating those capabilities in its phones. On the Pixel 8s, you will be able to ask the assistant to summarize, read aloud and translate articles and web pages. I opened up my iPhone 15 Pro Max hands-on, long pressed the power button to bring up the assistant and told it to summarize this page. 
the assistant said the other reviews the iphone 15 pro max which has a new zoom lens and a new action button it goes on to explain in two subsequent bullet points that my article had said that the action button is programmable and that the device has a titanium body and a fine oven case that is meant to replace the leather my inner editor would tweak some of the language there, but the assistant generally did a good job summarizing my piece. At the bottom, Google asks for feedback on the summary and suggests some follow-up actions with buttons like about iPhones, who invented the iPhone and more. If you have spent any time playing with the chatbot like Bard or Bing AI, this will all feel very familiar. I didn't actually have to use my voice to ask for a breakdown of my article, by the way. After bringing up the assistant, the system offers suggested action like summarize, read aloud, translate, and search screen. If you want to keep your attention on crossing the road or don't have time to scan and enter review, the new read aloud tool can be very helpful. I particularly like that when you ask the assistant to read something out, a box appears with controls for playback speed, skipping ahead or back 10 seconds, as well as a progress bar that you can drag. At the bottom right of the playback box is a little translate icon. You can not only ask the assistant to convert articles in foreign languages into one you understand, but it can also read aloud in a supported language too. I asked for my review to be translated to and read aloud in Mandarin and the Pixel 8 Pro did so accurately and almost immediately. One of my favorite features on Pixel phones is call screening which lets you tap the assistant to figure out who is ringing you and why. With updates coming to the Pixel 8 line, the artificial voice will sound more natural adding some pauses and non-verbal utterances to seem more human. We saw examples of this when Google first announced Duplex and while most of us were nervous about the implications of AI that could sound much more human, there are potential advantages here. Most notably, callers are probably less likely to hang up if they think they are talking to a real person and you will have an easier time asking them questions without picking up the phone. The assistant can also understand if someone is calling about a package and will suggest more follow-ups like leave by front door and I will be right there during a rehearsed demo with the Google executives. This worked very well. But when I tried later by masquerading as a delivery person looking for a signature, the assistant failed to bring up a relevant prompt. I wouldn't be surprised if the company improves this further over time and frankly its call screening is still better than Apple's live voicemail which was just released in iOS 17. Google's implementation allows for greater flexibility and interaction making it more helpful. Another one of my favorite Pixel first tools is the Recorder app and soon it will be able to provide summaries of your transcripts. If you use Recorder for loads of meetings and interviews, this may help you more quickly identify the chat you are looking for. Based on the demo I saw, it doesn't provide very detailed recaps, instead offering incredibly high-level bullet points. Reporters like myself will probably still need to spend a lot of time picking out noteworthy quotes. Some of the biggest improvements to the Pixel 8's cameras are in video recording and processing. The main new feature is Video Boost, which will upload your clips to the cloud for enhancement using Google's more powerful processors. These include applying HDR+, enhanced color grading and for the first time night side video. In a sample, Google showed me a scene of someone seemingly kicking a ball into a net by themselves in the dark looked so much brighter after a video boost that I was able to see that there was a second person in the shot. I am a bit skeptical about this feature because it requires you to send a file to Google servers and it's not clear how long it will take for the results to come back. The company said it could be a few hours or longer depending on the length of the video. It's also coming later this year and won't be available at launch, so there is still some time before we can check it out for ourselves. 
I am more integrated, however, by the Google is calling audio magic eraser, just as the magic eraser for images can improve photo bombers in the background, this new tool can reduce background noise in your videos. I was shown a sample video of a street performer playing on an instrument and a siren blaring by, overpowering the music. After audio magic eraser was applied, the sound of the pausing vehicle was noticeably reduced. Though it was not completely eliminated, it was definitely less distracting. There are plenty of other new features coming to the Pixel 8 series including an improved best take that lets you pick your favorite shot of each person in a group photo. Magic Editor, which was introduced at Google I.O. this year, will also be available when the new flagship launch. Finally, the Pixel 8 Pro's 10.5 megapixel selfie camera is getting autofocus while the regular Pixel 8 also has a 10.5 megapixel selfie sensor but with fixed focus. In addition to cameras, assistant and the temperature sensor, there are some updates across the Pixel 8 series worth mentioning. Face Unlock, for example, has now been deemed to meet the company's internal security standards and can therefore be used in more areas like authenticating mobile payments or logging into apps. That's in part enabled by the Tensor G3 chip in both phones, which also powers things like audio magic eraser, filtering out more spam calls and more. We don't know very very much else about Tensor G3 at the moment too. Google is also introducing a new name for the displays it uses on the Pixels, Actua on the smaller handset and Super Actua on the Pro. Think of it as Retina and Super Retina on Apple devices, but Google, the, the names don't really mean anything other than that the company is using its own software and processing to make things look brighter and sharper. We are at a point with smartphone displays where most human beings can't tell the difference between a super retina and a super actual display as long as they are playing the same content at the same brightness. What's worth noting is that the Pixel 8 now has a 6.2 inch screen and refreshes at 120Hz while the Pixel 8 Pro maintains the same 6.7 inch size with an ever so slightly wider aspect ratio of 20 to 9. The pros also have a matte finish this time and come in bay, porcelain and obsidian while the smaller handset is available in rose in addition to the black and white options. For things like battery life, performance, how slippery the phone is and how hot it runs, we'll need to use the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro in the real world before we have a verdict. Stay tuned for our full review to get all those details.